In this video, we're going to look at the very basics of using SketchUp, a 3D modeling program, to create our first practice joint, which is a butt joint as shown on the screen here. Uh, before we begin, I will note that we are using in this video the new app version, the online version of SketchUp. It happens to be the education version. Um, if you're using the downloaded version, the traditional version of SketchUp, uh, you can follow along with everything here. The main difference you'll see, of course, is your tools are not on the side. Your tools will be along top of your screen. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same. And the icons and the tools themselves will be very similar. I do encourage you to look at using the new app where possible. Um, certainly for classwork at our school, we will be using the online version, the app version here. So before I begin, uh, we will just clear this image off. And I'm going to do that by creating a new file. So I'm going to simply go and choose to create a new model. And of course, I'm making sure I do that in millimeters. Okay, here we are starting with a new model. And the first thing I'm always going to do is get rid of our little uh, temporary person here. So I'm just going to choose to erase that person just to get a nice clean workspace. And just to be certain that I am using millimeters, I'm gonna come over to my inspector over here and just check that it is in fact using millimeters and I don't really need any more precision than a single decimal point, so I'm happy with that. If of course it was set to something like this, that would mean you're using inches and that would be no good. We would make sure that we were in fact using millimeters and we'll just hide that away. All right, what we're gonna be doing is creating uh, pieces within the virtual SketchUp world that are essentially like the real pieces of wood that we would be using. So I'm gonna begin simply by creating what would be that piece of wood. So I'll begin that in this case by using a rectangle tool, just that first rectangle tool there. I'm going to draw uh, just a, a general rectangle shape, making sure that one side is longer than the other. The reason I'm doing that is I want to immediately look down to the bottom right hand corner to see my measurements. So once I let go of my mouse button, I'm not touching anything else, not clicking anywhere else, and that's very, very important. But I'm just looking towards the bottom right here where I can see that I've got two measurements separated by a comma. The first one is larger than the second, and that's showing me that the first measurement is indicating this length along here, my longer length, and the second one is indicating this measurement here. And that just helps me to know the order that I'm gonna put these measurements. So what I'm gonna do now before I click or touch anything else, is I'm simply gonna type the measurements that I'd like the shape to be, because obviously it is being drawn a lot bigger than I expect. The way it looks on the screen, it doesn't look big, but that's just to do with how far I've zoomed in or out. Uh, in actual fact, this is over a thousand millimeters long, which is way too big. The size that I want for this example is actually only 100 millimeters long, and this width across is going to be 70 millimeters. So I'm gonna type that in 100 comma 70. Now, before I press anything else again, don't wanna press enter or anything yet, just gonna explain that I'm not putting the mm for millimeters in, I could, and it would be perfectly fine, but because I'm using millimeters for this model, it automatically knows that every measurement I type in here is in that unit, in the millimeters unit. If I wasn't certain about that, I could certainly type 100 mm, 70 mm, and I'd end up in the same situation. But I'm happy with that, so I press enter on my keyboard, and we can see that rectangle seems to have shrunk very, very small. Now again, it's not actually very, very small. It's the correct size for what we want. It's just that our zoom is a lot further out. So what I'm now gonna do is zoom in to that model. Now, if you're using a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can actually just scroll your wheel forward and it'll zoom in towards your cursor, wherever that might be. So if I was over here, it's gonna zoom that way. Um, or otherwise, what I can also do, and it might be quicker in this case, especially if you're not using a mouse with a wheel on it, is I can come over to the, the uh, zoom tools over here, and I can choose this last tool with the three arrows around it 
to zoom in to fit the entire model. So whatever my model might be, that zooms all the way in. The other thing I want to do is I want to actually orbit around it. So I want to change the, the angle a bit so it looks a bit more like this. I can look down a little bit. Again, if you're using a wheel mouse, you can click and hold your center wheel and move your mouse and you can get that orbit tool like I'm doing now. Or if you don't have a wheel mouse, again, you can come over to this uh, bottom tool and you can choose the orbit tool here and holding down your left mouse button, you can again orbit. Uh, you may realize by now that it is a lot easier to have a mouse with both the scroll in and out for zooming and the orbit at the same time. Uh, you can actually do things a lot more efficiently if you do. But I basically want to shape and to sort of sit around about here. So what I still have at the moment is just a plain two-dimensional shape. It's 100 millimeters along the long length and 70 millimeters across the shorter length. But I want this to be a 3D representation like the real piece of wood. And our real wood that we'll be using is 12 millimeters in thickness. So essentially what I want is to take this 2D flat shape and I want to bring it up to be 12 millimeters thick. And I do that in SketchUp by using this tool here, which is our push pull tool. Again, I'm just going to use the, 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 the plane tool. And I bring that now over to my shape and you might just be able to tell that it changes color. That change of color is indicating that this is a shape that I can push or pull. Now what I do is I'm simply going to click and hold my left mouse button and drag or pull uh, that shape into a three-dimensional shape. Now a little bit like before, I can just pull it to any size and down in that bottom right-hand corner, again, you'll notice it's now a distance measurement. And like before, I don't click on anything else, but I just simply type my measurement straight in, press enter, and that will go to be the correct size. Okay, we now have our shape, our piece of wood, if you like. And we need to have two of them, though, for this uh, joint to happen. We're going to be creating that right angle. So the quickest way we're going to do that is to simply make a copy of this. We don't need to draw it all from scratch. We could, of course, we could go draw another rectangle, the right size, push and pull it, and so forth. But let's be smart about what we do and just make a copy. Now, before we copy, I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to basically group all these things together. Because if I take my selection tool, what you might notice now is each of these sides is separate and each of these edges is separate. I can click on them individually. And if I accidentally maybe deleted this edge, you can see I have a serious effect on the whole model because that edge is gone. Therefore, the top surface isn't solid and the side isn't solid anymore. Let me just undo that. So I don't make those mistakes. What I want to do is group it together. Now, the quickest way is to, again, take your selection tool. And a little bit like in other programs, I'm just going to draw a box that highlights all of that, making sure that it is highlighted. You can see they've all gone blue, both the surfaces and the edges and the lines. And I'm simply going to right click on it now and choose the Make Group. So that's now one group. If I click on or off it, you can see I'm selecting the whole piece in one. And that's just gonna help us with some of what we're about to do. So before I go any further, I'm just gonna zoom out again, just to create a bit more space around it. Remember, it's not changing the size, it's just changing the zoom, how far it is from my camera or the way I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna choose that, and I'm now gonna make a copy. So the easiest way to make that copy is simply to choose your group and I like to do just Command or Control if you're Windows, Copy C, and then Control V to make a second copy. And as you can see, for the moment, it's sort of attached to my cursor, so I'm just going to stick it over here by clicking just to basically place it. So I've now got two copies of the exact same object, same group. Okay, the next stage is I don't want them both flat like this. I need one in a vertical position and one in the horizontal position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one I just made a copy of and I'm going to rotate that round for it to be facing in the vertical position. And again, if I haven't grouped it, so I'm just gonna actually ungroup this one for a second. So I'm gonna explode the group, which basically puts everything back to individual pieces. If I didn't group this, and I was to rotate, and I'll explain the rotation properly in a moment, but let's say I was rotating uh, this object here, and I thought I was doing everything properly, 
but it wasn't grouped, I start to get some very strange things happening because in fact, I'm rotating only a part of it. And what SketchUp's trying to do here is to keep this object as a solid object and we're getting some very strange results. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna just regroup this object again. I have to be very careful that I choose all of it. I've just missed the corner there. So I need to make sure I'm choosing all of the object again. I'm just going to make it back into a group. All right, this way when I rotate, everything rotates around together. So grouping is a very, very important thing to do. So you may have noticed what I did, but let me explain it properly. So I'm gonna come over to the rotation tools here and make sure I'm choosing the rotation tool in the middle there. And you just notice here, I've got this sort of protractor coming out. Now, what I want to do is to create two points on this object. The first point, the first click that I do will be the pivot point, the point that everything turns around. And then the second place that I click will sort of be the handle, if you like, where I'm actually rotating from. So if I think about the shape here, I basically want to rotate it 90 degrees around. And what I'm going to do is just use I like to use a corner as a pivot point as much as possible. So I'm going to click on there and I'm just going to come along this line a little bit, click. And now you can see I've got a pivoting location. Okay. Now, like before, I don't want to just guess my angle. Um, you can see down the bottom right hand corner, that box that we've kept using is now saying angle and I can type my angle in 90 degrees, press enter and I've had a perfect rotation done. So now that is exactly the angle I want. Now, whenever I rotate, I, I like to straight away go and choose the select tool again. And the only reason for that is if I've still got the rotation tool chosen like this, it's very easy to, without realizing it, start rotating things again, because I click to do something and suddenly I've rotated it again. So I like to sort of cancel the rotation by choosing the select tool. Okay, we're pretty close now. We've got one in the horizontal, if you like, one in the vertical. I just need to bring them together. So to do that, I'm going to now move this piece across so that this corner over here lines up with this corner here, as if I join these two pieces of wood together. Now to do that, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that all these shapes have these nodes. If I just zoom in a little bit more and I click on some things, we'll start to see these nodes appear, these points of interest around our shape. And I'll see that when I choose my movement tool. So over here, if I go to this, uh, where I had rotation before, but I instead choose the first tool with the four-way arrow, when I click on shapes or hover over shapes, you'll start to see yeah, these little locking points and all the corners and stuff that it likes. So essentially I can grab one of these points and use it to lock to another point, a little bit like locking Lego together. So what I'm gonna do is grab that corner, like I said before, and as I hold down my mouse, you can see I'm moving this piece around. And what I basically wanna do is to try and bring my cursor over to the matching point, and you can see how they kinda of wanna to lock together. Nice and easy. Now I'm just gonna zoom out, and I'm also gonna pan or orbit around a little bit just to see it a bit better. Now, sometimes when you are moving things, it can be hard to tell how you're moving around the space. So sometimes you have to sort of move it a bit, rotate to get a better view, move it a bit more, and so on. So sometimes, again, using that mouse wheel especially is a lot easier to do. Uh, and there we go, I've got that nicely locked together again. Okay, so let's zoom out again. I'm gonna go back and use that zoom that we did earlier. So it's gonna show the whole model pretty happy with that. Maybe just go out a little bit and maybe just a little orbit to get a better view. So there I have it. I've simulated or, or drawn a virtual version of my um, butt joint where I've taken two pieces, the correct size, everything's measured accurately, and I put them together, obviously not showing nails or glue or anything, but I put them together in the same way as I would the practice joint that we'll be doing in class. I hope this has made some sense. You might need to rewatch it a few times and have a go yourself, of course. Um, and of course, if you have questions, feel free to let me know.